Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video, I can tell you my whole workflow on composite photography in the Kendall CoolCam 8K. My name is Yijun Guo, a 360 photographer lover and specialize in one-shot 360 photography. In this video, I'm gonna take you through my private, personal workflow step-by-step step, from start to finish. And in 2020, personally speaking, the Canon CoolCam 8K is still one of the most capable camera of the one-shot 360 photography. It has the DNG8 shooting mode and RAW Plus that could help you capture a burst of raw DNG photos in a very quick succession and help you make image stacking without any ghosting. That will give you a lot more flexibility in the post-processing workflow. Because the workflow is so flexible, that many people might find it difficult to master the Canon QM 8K. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my own example. And I hope this video will be inspiring and help you achieve much better results from your QCAM 8K. And of course, with other 360 cameras. So now, let's get started. This is the final result of the burning Bacardi in a local bar panorama in low light. To capture the best imaging quality, I choose ISO 100 and I shoot 16 DNG at EV0 and 8 DNG at EV-4. So altogether, I have 24 DNG shots. In my workflow, the first step is always to choose the reference image. So the reference image actually, this photo captured the best moment. And we have 16 DNG at EV0, but we have multiple wonderful moments. And as you can see, I have marked with five stars. And altogether, in my shot, in this scenario, I have three best moments. One of them is to capture my expression. The other one is capture the environment. The last one is to capture the best moment of the bartender. So with composite photography, I compose them into one single shot before stitching. Once you have selected the appropriate reference images, now open the RAW Plus and drag and drop these 16 DNG photos multiple times and set different reference images on the top so that you will get high imaging quality for each of the reference image. And for the EV-4, I capture only for the highlight, so I don't uh, uh, care about the reference image anymore. And after RAW Plus stacking, we can start post-processing right now. And once you have got 16-bit high-quality DNG photos, you can color correct in Adobe Camera Raw or the Photoshop Lightroom CC. Uh, with some sliders back and forth, it's just like playing games. And what you see is what you get, of course. And uh, remember to synchronize all the parameters with all the photos because you are going to make composite post-processing in Photoshop later on. And in my scenario, in this case, I found that one of the photo my own expression is not crystal clear enough. So I go back to the bridge and select another shot as a reference image and do the raw plus stacking again. So I could get a perfect crystal clear and sharp expression from the image stacking. So always go back and forth and that will help you get the best possible result in every detail of your panorama. And once we have go back and forth between RAW Plus and Adobe Bridge, now we are finally ready for the composite in Photoshop and export all the TNG file into TIFF format and, uh, and uh, import them as individual layers in Adobe Photoshop. And we choose one of the photo as the background image and use the layer mask to mask out every one of the wonderful moment. And you can also recover the overexposed highlight with the underexposed shot. So that is the meaning of composite photography. With composite tricks, you can get a nearly perfect image before stitching. So next up is going to stitch them in the CoolCam Studio. And during the composite photography, you can use any one of the trick in Photoshop to help you to get the most stunning detail before stitching. And sometimes it's very time consuming for the composite photography, but once you get the best possible result before stitching, that is a very pleasing experience in the 
whole workflow. So after the composition in Photoshop, if you save the final result as a JPEG format, the Cookham Studio will directly support and stitch with the high resolution panorama. But with TIFF format, you will come across with this error. To get rid of that, you will use Active Tools to copy and paste all the metadata from the original TIFF file to your recomposed TIFF file. This is the very tricky part. And the Coolcam Studio will get rid of this issue in the future version. And after the Photoshop composite operations, now we can stitch the final result in the Coolcam Studio. In the Coolcam Studio, remember to correct the horizontal line if possible. I recommend to choose the highest resolution output, such as the 15K with the super resolution and the PNG file format. And the Coolcam Studio kindly provide our stitch panel feature for the panoramic photographers. We can correct the stitching lines in the post-processing. And in this case, because the, the table bar is a tiny space, so we might come across with severe stitching errors. And now we are going to get rid of the stitching errors in post. Once we have output with unstitch panel, we can always import them as Photoshop layers. And my experience is that you can always duplicate the unstitch panel layers multiple times for more flexibility in the correction of stitching errors. And uh, go to the, the unstitch panel back and forth until you can get a perfect result and get rid of all the stitching errors. And in this video, you can see I have applied many Photoshop tricks in the correction of the stitching errors. I bet you will definitely learn a lot from my own experience in Photoshop with the stitching error correction. And uh, always remember to check every one of the pixel during the stitching line. The stitching line is where the, the two fish eye intersect each other and uh, make the stitch. And sometimes the stitching error correction takes some time, but uh, you can always get the perfect result with enough patience. And sometimes to give the viewer the best immersive experience, a perfect Nadia shot is a must-have in your panorama. In this case, I use a clone step to correct the Nadia part, and I use some very tricky Photoshop operations to get rid of the shadow area of my Coolcam 8K camera. And if you want to know how I get rid of the shadow, I will link another very good tutorial on the YouTube on the top right of this video. You can find more detail and explanations in that tutorial. But here I will show every one of my steps in the Photoshop. This is a very classic Photoshop tricks to remove the shadows. And here you can see I use the liquify tools to make me look thinner and uh, more handsome. As you can see, and I correct every one of the artifacts, the disfact on my face. So this is a conventional portrait photography skills in my uh, photography life. And you can apply any one of your skills to the panoramic shot to make your panorama look more beautiful and more interesting. And after that, you can drag and drop to see all the round, make that everything is. So once you have correct all the stitching errors, and once you have made a perfect Nadia patch, next up is use some Photoshop color correction tricks to fine tune every detail of your panorama. In this case, you can see I have made the wine looks more beautiful. And next up, I use level adjustment, some curves. Always choose uh, the best initial viewpoint, use the offset filter in Adobe Photoshop. And after that, you can save and share with your friends. Let's make a small summary on my workflow. So with DNJ raw burst shooting mode, you can capture many special moments in every one of the individual shots. And with my workflow, you can stack and squeeze those wonderful moments into one high quality DNG photo. And with my post-processing tricks, you can get rid of the stitching errors, get rid of the artifacts, and make very good color correction on your panorama. And that's all for today's video. If you like it, if you love my channel, please thumb up, subscribe, 
and hit notification bell. But if you find this video is boring, it's not interesting, I recommend you hit the dislike twice. Okay, so see you next time. Bye.